Hello, everyone, and welcome back to our series on energy modeling with Dragonfly. And in the previous video, we uh, we managed to create a Dragonfly model from these building footprints we have in, in, within a Rhino scene uh, by also importing a lot of the, the kind of properties associated that we wanted to assign to these objects uh, into Grasshopper. Uh, but at the end of the day, we've managed to internalize everything in these nice components, and we have a kind of self-contained model uh, of all the buildings we are interested in uh, now in Grasshopper. Now, I know we climbed a pretty steep learning, learning curve in that previous video working with Grasshopper data trees, so if you guys really had, had issues following along, I provided the link in the description of this video to the ultimate sample file that we're working towards uh, with this, so you guys can use that to try and get the, this, this basic setup that we have here without having to import everything from Rhino. Uh, but I, I'd really encourage you guys, if you could follow along with the previous videos, that uh, that it, it'd be really nice to, I'm going to be building this all out from this this one section here. Uh, so again, if you guys can follow along throughout the whole thing, that is that is preferred. So all right, so we, we explored some of the inputs to this Dragonfly from building footprint in the previous uh, video. But right now, we're just kind of visualizing only the geometry that we've meant to create here in the Rhino scene. Uh, we weren't really able to see any of the other properties that may be assigned to this. And you guys will remember that I actually said that these Dragonfly building objects already have everything that, need, that they need to be able to go off to the, the energy simulation engine. So in this video, we're going to look at what exactly these properties are and start to change some of them and customize them to make sense for our, our district here. So, all right, we're going to be spending, again, most of our time over in the Dragonfly tab today. Uh, and in particular, I'm going to use this Visualize tab in order to be able to, uh, to, to help display some of the attributes assigned to these uh, Dragonfly objects. So, first things first, I'm going to grab this DF Color Room 2D Attributes component. So, if I go and I drop this onto the canvas, you'll see that it's a visualization component that takes Dragonfly objects just like Visualize All except that now you can also plug in an attribute, so a property assigned basically to this geometry that you want to display or understand. So I'm actually going to just delete this DF Visualize All component for now because I don't want it to interfere with the visualization I'm going to be getting out of this component. And I'm going to plug in my DF, my buildings, my Dragonfly buildings into this component. So all right, so that satisfies one of the, the required uh, inputs for this component. The other thing that we really need is the name of an attribute. And if you guys were watching under this one visualize tab, there's actually the component right here that provides you a list of all the attributes, or a list at least of the most common attributes that you may want to check on this Dragonfly geometry. So I'm going to go drop this DF room 2D attributes component on the canvas. Uh, and you can see if you click the little arrow, this is going to give you a long list of all the things that are being assigned when you pass the geometry from this component through this, this DF building from footprint component. So importantly, this is really important to understand, right? The, the value coming out of this component is just geometry. This is just trim surfaces, right, from the Rhino scene representing the footprints. Out of here, right, we have... Not just the like the fully detailed geometries that I showed you previously, but these geometries also have all of these other energy properties being assigned to them, uh, so that you are able to simulate them in, in a simulation. So, all right, I'm going to be very dumb at first and just take the display name as uh, as the attribute that I want to want to visualize here. So, if I go, I select display name from the drop down after clicking on the arrow, and then I'm going to connect that up to the attribute here to be previewed in the scene. And whoa, okay, <laughs> getting a lot of different things here, right? So basically what we're, what we're understanding here is that we're getting a color for each and every story of each and every building, right? We can see that the story name is derived from, uh, well, basically it's, you know, floor one, floor two, et cetera, but it actually contains the name that we assign to the building object here. Uh, so, so we can actually see that, that how that will allow us to track these, these room 2D objects throughout the simulation. Let's look at something a little more useful. Uh, maybe we'll look at the floor to ceiling height, right? So we see, right, as we had done before, right, that's 3.5 meters. That's exactly what we'd expect. Uh, what if we were to take the floor elevation, right? So this is actually showing us uh, how many meters from the rhino origin uh, that each, each story is, right? And so we can see as you go up, that number gets larger. Uh, all right, so we're, we're able to kind of see, you know, I mean, these are all kind of things that we, we already know. Uh, we can see a ceiling elevation as well. 
Uh, we can see things like gross floor area, right? And so those are all the same for each and every building. But all right, let's look at something that we really, really actually want to look at here. So what if I go down to look at the uh, the pro the construction set? We'll look at this. That is the that is assigned to all of these uh, Dragonfly buildings. And you see, by default, much like in the same way when we created Honeybee objects and we didn't specify anything specific for the construction set, you'll see that all of these Dragonfly buildings are getting this default generic construction set assigned to them uh, when we, uh, you know, when we pass them through this component. So this is most certainly or, or almost never, I think, what you actually want because the default generic construction set, it isn't sensitive to any particular climate or standard or energy code. Uh, so at the very least, I think what we'd like to start to do is, is assign a better construction set to these uh, Dragonfly buildings such that it's actually going to be uh, representative of what we'd expect in this climate. Uh, now I'll give something away that this this actually this particular district that we're modeling here is is kind of on a theoretical site in Buffalo, New York, uh, and and I realize that probably a lot of you internationally have never heard of maybe of Buffalo, New York. It's a pretty small city, but I can tell you it's in a fairly cool climate. It's in in climate zone five, asteroid climate zone five, and so I would like to assign a construction set to these buildings that is that is suitable for climate zone five. So, all right, I'm going to make Grasshopper big here, and I'm going to jump over to the Honeybee Energy tab. And just in the exact same way that we assigned construction sets to Honeybee rooms when we worked, when we were building Honeybee models, I'm going to use that exact same workflow to assign construction sets to my, my Dragonfly objects. And the reason why I know I can do that is because there's actually a construction set input on my DF from building footprint component here. So I, and if I hover over that, that'll tell me I can just plug in a construction set, you know, anything from the library that we ship with Ladybug Tools or any any construction set that I happen to make uh, with, the, with the components. So, all right, I'm going to grab this uh, HB construction set by climate component, right, because I, that's essentially what I want to do. I just want to grab a construction set that's a sensitive to the climate zone of Buffalo, New York, climate zone 5. Uh, and so I can grab my little drop down of HB climate zones also from this Honeybee Energy tab, right? And you can see they're really just eight, uh, you know, climate zones right now. And it's already set to the one that I want, which is just five or, or cool. Uh, so I'm going to plug that into the climate zone here. Uh, you'll see, I mean, the other defaults being set here for uh, the vintage, which is, you know, Asteroid 90.1 2019 or, or ICC 2021. Oh, yeah, I believe 2021 or 20. 22. Um, and uh, right in the construction type, it's steel framed. I think this makes enough sense for my district. I'm not going to change those. So I'm just going to go and plug my construction set straight up to my DF from building footprint component. And then when I go back to the Rhino scene, you'll see, all right, now when I look at the construction set, uh, this is this is what I want. So I can rest assured that the, you know, the various R values of the walls and the roofs and the windows, they are going to be suitable for this uh, cooler climate zone five here that I know this district is in. Uh, all right. So at the very least, I've done that. Next, let's keep looking down the properties that I have here. And you'll see that we have a bunch of other, other properties being assigned. Uh, for example, we can check whether it's uh, conditioned or not, which we see is true. So by default, there's an HVAC system being assigned here. Uh, and if we check the HVAC name, you'll see they're actually all just ideal air load systems for now. That seems perfectly reasonable for our first model that we're working towards. Uh, and very importantly, we also have the program. So now you'll see just like in, in Honeybee, uh, when we created mod, uh, models without specifying a specific program, like what you see being input to the DF, the DF uh, uh, from footprint component here, uh, right, it's going to just assign this very generic office program, right, and that's that's clearly not where what we're after. So in the next video, we're going to uh, basically assign programs to these uh, these buildings that make sense. You'll see that we already kind of have an idea of what programs you want to assign to these uh, these various objects because of uh, right the names that we've assigned to them uh, essentially hint at which types of programs we want to use. Clearly, some are residential, one's a mall. Uh, one's a hospital looks like. Uh, so in the next video, we're going to basically work towards assigning these uh, these various programs. Uh, so before I go over though, there's there's one other uh, input for this component that I want you to see. So you'll see that we could, if we wanted to, make buildings unconditioned. There's a simple Boolean input for uh, to be able to turn that off. Uh, I'm just going to leave that you know as is for now. I think it's true that everything should be conditioned. 
but we did not get the chance to cover this perimeter offset. Um, and essentially what this means is when we haven't plugged in anything for the perimeter offset, you see that each and every story of our Dragonfly model is an entire Honeybee room. Uh, now you guys remember in the intro presentation I showed that you can actually change this perimeter offset uh, so that we can model you know, different orientations of north, south, east, and west, right? And each one of those will, uh, will get a separate room uh, room 2D and, and ultimately room, uh, you know, zone within the Energy Plus model that we export. So just to show you guys this before we run to the next video, I'm going to pull up a slider so that you guys can actually see uh, what the effect of different perimeter offsets are, are. And I'm going to make a slider that goes from zero, maybe up to, it will go all the way to 20 meters. Um, but I want you guys to basically see now when I plug in a value for perimeter offset, well, at zero, I probably shouldn't see any change, right, which is what's happening here. But as I start to make this number go up, you'll see, right, that we automatically have methods built into Dragonfly uh, to generate core perimeter values for all the buildings in the model. All right, so this should save you a lot of time if you had to zone this all yourself, right? It's a, it'd be a lot of uh, tracing over, over the model to be able to get this. Uh, and you see the methods that we have automatically uh, are, you know, they're straight skeletons. So if the offset distance is so far that you don't get a core zone, uh, you will see that, right? It's not until you start to move that back that you'll see something different. Uh, so I think I'm just going to use a pretty consistent offset depth for all of these. Maybe I'll just set it to, I don't know, 10 meters. Uh, but in this way, right, we'll be able to account for the fact that, the, you know, the cooling and heating on this side of the building is different than that on the other side of the building, right? And all that kind of useful information about energy is going to get washed out when we're modeling it all as a single story. So, all right, I just wanted to show you that before we moved on to the next video. Uh, and as you can probably guess, the creating of programs is going to take us some time. That's why we have a whole video devoted to it. Uh, but uh, I think hopefully you see now at least how you can check the attributes of, of your Dragonfly objects, of, you know, uh, and you can see probably I'd encourage you to look through some of these other objects. In the next uh, video, though, we'll actually work towards assigning these programs, uh, and I look forward to seeing you there.